Shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to give all praises and glory and honor that's due to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakwadash. Um, I'd like to give double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone that rule well. Peace and blessings and salutations to the 144,000, which is the elect prophets of the nation of Israel. The news in this gospel, bro, lifting up the standard of Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, wherever it may be. Um, this is a quick lesson through the spirit. Uh, kind of piggybacking on a last video that several brothers have put out regarding this guy, Bishop Nate of the IUIC, which stands for the Israel United in Christ. Um, there's a lot of damnable heresies, false doctrine that's being taught by this group. And the men of the Lord of the Great Millstone, we're responsible for putting this, uh, these, these, these videos out to correct these breakdowns, man, because we are uh, uh, in service into the flock, the little ones, the sheep. Okay, because you have a lot of men out here that's looking for a home or that's looking for the truth that may be rather sincere in their beliefs, but yet they're being led away by all these false prophets. Okay, the big controversy now is the fact that after a thousand year period, uh, the nations of Esau Edom is going to come back into power or some roundabout way to make an attempt. I say it that way, make an attempt to take us back down, which that's just not biblical. And see what a lot of these guys are doing they're not understanding the concept of the thousand year periods that's mentioned in revelation the 20th chapter which is broken up into two thousand year periods okay with the first one being a fall of the western roman empire okay which is the setting up of the uh, pagan roman empire which was forwarded by jake okay starting with the council of nausea through constantine the great which was an israelite okay and then the second thousand year period will be when the nations are subjugated into the nation of Israel, okay, which there would be no more war, there would be no more uh, uh, death of the Israelites, okay, there won't be any more confusion among the nation of Israel, okay, and the heathens are going to be in utmost subjection to, the, to, to our people, okay, so uh, we're going to get into a couple of precepts, <clears throat> going into how there's not going to be any more wars once our Lord reigns, okay, once Yahweh shot come back to the earth, because you got to ask yourself this, why would a nation that's being subjugated attempt to take over a nation that's endowed with spiritual power and spiritual abilities to manipulate elements? Okay, that would be a suicide mission, and the nations know that. All right, so the first precept I pulled was the book of Isaiah, the 11th chapter. And this is talking about the time when Yahweh Shai comes to reign on the earth. Okay, when you go into Revelation, the uh, 20th chapter. And in the fourth verse when it goes in that we should reign a thousand years with Hamashiach This is going into that period Okay, because we know that once the Israelites are in rulership We're not going to be taken down again No nation, no nation is even going to attempt to overthrow us Because they're going to be blessed Through the understanding and wisdom of the Most High That the men of the Lord will pass down To these nations, okay So this is the book of uh, Isaiah 11 And I'm going to start at verses the whole chapter is good But let's start at verses uh, 4 It says but with righteousness should he judge uh, The poor Okay and who is the poor The Negroes, Latinos and Native American the Israelites And reprove of equity for the meek of the earth And he should smite the earth With the rod of his mouth And with the breath of his lips he should slay the wicked man And who is the wicked The other nations man starting with Esau Edom because we know during this time they're going to be subjugated It says in righteousness should be the girdle of his loins And faithfulness the girdle of his reins And you got to ask yourself this If we're going to rule in utmost perfection And we're going to keep the law, statutes, and commandments To the utmost T There won't be a need for the Most High to bring another nation against us And take us down Okay, because the reason why we were broken down in the first place Is because we didn't keep the commandments of the Heavenly Father Okay, as a matter of fact um, I'm going to come back and I'm going to get that in Baruch Go to the book of Baruch, the fourth chapter is good The second chapter is good as well But uh, this is the book of Baruch 4 And I'm going to start at verses 1 It says, this is the book of the commandments of Yahweh And the law that endure forever And all they that keep it should come to life Okay, and we understand in the kingdom we're going to actually live Okay, in the first beginning of that process The first resurrection of the Most High Sending his son Yahweh Shai to be a sacrifice and to wake up the elect of our nation and to reign with them that thousand year period which is that first resurrection man okay because when you go into the book of revelation 11 it says and after three and a half days their bodies their dead bodies were uh uh enter their dead bodies life entered to them and the nations that saw them were was afraid and that's the beginning 
of that first resurrection, which is going to allude to the Lord reigning on the earth. Okay. That's what it's going to allude to because we have our heritage back because we was in a dead state. But now we know who we are. We're like in the part of the first resurrection fully to be uh, uh, played out once the Lord comes and reign on the earth. man. All right. But it says, but such a leave it shall die. Okay. So the reason why we're in this state is because we haven't kept the commandments, you know, and the Lord has taken his spirit away from us. But since we're coming back to our heritage, we're learning who the most high is and we're seeking the most high 10 times more. Okay. That's why it says here, turn the old Jacob and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof that thou mayest be illuminated. Okay. And this is the start of it. And we're seeing it. We're seeing it play out as we speak. But it will come into full implementation once Yahweh Shai subjugate these nations. It says, Give not thy honor unto another, nor the things that are profitable unto thee unto a strange nation, man. Okay, and this is why the nations are going to be subjugated. Okay, but it says, But be of good cheer, my people. The memorial of Israel, when you go into uh, the memorial, memorial goes into a monument, okay, which is to Zion, which the more memorial of our nation is being king and priests and prophets of the Most High and reigning in righteousness, man. Okay, and it says you were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because ye moved the most high to wrath, ye were delivered unto your enemies. It says, For ye provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not the most high. And you are forgetting the everlasting power that brought you up. You have grieved Jerusalem that has nourished you, man. Okay, so ask yourself this how will we be subjugated to the other nations with spiritual power when we're gonna be upright and perfect? Okay, because if we was to break the law, status, and commandments, then that can be the case. But we're going to be perfect. Okay, the scriptures say we're going to have a new heart written in us, man. Enter into that new covenant. No other nations is going to be able to subjugate us in that because we're going to have the commandments written in our inner parts, man. Okay, so just to make a point on that. Uh, oh, Shalakia, Shalakia. So that's just to get the meat off that bone. To put it into proper context Because if you read the Revelation The 20th chapter Then if you read it verbatim as it is And you don't understand the breaking points In the uh, historical context of those scriptures Then you will get confused and say Well damn what's the point of us reigning a thousand years With our savior Just for a low base a, a heathen A base man being able to subjugate us again Like it don't make any sense It would make everything we're doing all and boy Because it would be a tipsy turny of rulerships Us than them than them than us No that's boring that's wickedness man Okay, and we're never going to be taken down. We're never going to be taken down again. And we're going to read it. It says, The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf, and the young lion, and the fat lean together, and the little child shall lead them, man. And who's the child that's talking about? The Israelites, okay? And this is going to be in our perfection when we have spiritual power. Okay? And it says here, And the cow shall bear, and the cow and the bear shall feed. And the young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the suckling, it says, and the suckling child shall play on the hole of the ass, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice's den. And the cockatrice is a, a poisonous serpent. Okay, but how will we do this if we're not in our perfection and we're not endowed with spiritual power? Okay, and what will be the need? us to be able to do these miraculous things through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, but yet a heathen can come and declare war on us, man. Okay, for one thing, the heathens are not gonna have any type of power to declare war on us because they're gonna be subjugated and the law, studies, and commandments are gonna reinforce. Okay, and all the weapons are gonna be burnt up. The reason why Esau is in power is because the law, studies, and commandments are not being brought forth. And this is the reason why his world is fallen, because the Lord's commandments are not being pushed, but they will be. Okay, and all nations are going to flow and all nations are going to live in beauty because of it. But it reads, it says here, and they should not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. It says, for the earth should be full of the knowledge of the Lord and the water should cover the sea. Okay, so it says they should not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. Okay, so that's not going to be any revolting against the Israelites. Now in their captivities, we will put hell on the nations. You know, they may talk their shit and they may, you know, do, you know, X, Y, and Z, but they're not going to have the power to revolt or get a stronghold over us to take us over. In fact, I hope they do talk shit when they're in slavery so we can be justified on putting hell on them, man. Okay, but Esau is not going to, or the other nations, they're not going to have the power to reign or to, to subjugate us anymore. They're not even going to have the power to attempt to overthrow us because we're going to have the utmost power. Okay, it says they should not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. 
It says, for the earth should be full of the knowledge of the Lord as waters cover the sea. So with that being said, when the wisdom and knowledge and understanding is put forth through Yahweh Shai on down through the elect men of Israel, how in the hell are the other nations are going to be able to trump that with wickedness? Okay, it's not going to happen. You see, so uh, let's go from here to the book of uh, Isaiah 2 and 4. And actually the book of Micah 4, 3 says the same thing. All right, but let's get a little bit here. Let's start at verses uh, 2 and 2. It says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, which we're currently in, that the mountain of the Lord's house should be established at the top of the mountains, okay? And what does top, what does mountain mean? Mountain is another way of saying governments. So that means that Yahweh Shai's kingdom will be the supreme and the ruling government on the planet Earth, okay? And it's going to subdue all these other nations. And you can read about that in Daniel, the seventh chapter. And it says here, In the house of Yahweh, the God of Jacob, will teach us his ways which we will walk in his paths not in the paths of wickedness man not in the paths of esau edom or these other nations we're not going to be worshiping santa claus or jesus christ or you know the easter bunny and uh ishtar we're not going to be worshiping the babylonian goddess goddess we're not going to be worshiped dionysus we're not going to be worshiping any greek gods but we're going to be worshiping our true power which is yahweh and his son yahweh shai that's why it says that he would teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths. It says, for out of Zion shall the law go forth and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So once that's, once that's established in the earth, there's not going to be any coming down from that. Okay, because only how the nations was able to come against us and to rebel against us is because we was not walking in the commandments of the heavenly father. But when you go into uh, Isaiah, what is it? No, Jeremiah. Uh, what is it? Uh. 30 and 30 i believe 31 31 roughly paraphrasing when the scriptures go into that the most high will write a new uh, uh, uh give us a, a heart of a flesh and he's going to renew within us a new mind that's going into the new covenant we're going to be in our utmost perfection we're going to walk beautified we're going to walk in perfection like the scriptures say we should be as Yahweh shy so if there's no need for us to sin there's no need for us to for the most high to have any revolts against us and take us down because the reason why we were taken down and put in slavery is because we didn't keep the commandments and we were walking in the uh, errors of our own ways, man. And it says to the house of the God of Jacob, he would teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion should go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, which proves that those them, them, them small hats over there are not the real people of the land. OK, because if this was the case, then the law, statutes and commandments will be going forth. OK, there wouldn't be no pink city in Tel Aviv. There would be no uh, imposters. There would be no war. The street would be paved with golds. There would be no more medical institutions. There wouldn't be any MOTB. There wouldn't be any death as far as on the Israelites. Those small heads wouldn't be getting bombed to hell if they were the real people, man. OK, so that cuts that. But it says that many people should say, go and come ye and let us walk or let us go up to the mountain, which is the government of the of Yahweh to the house of the god of jacob and he would teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths it says for out of zion should go forth the law and the word of the lord from jerusalem and he should judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people and they should beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks and nations should not lift up sword against nation neither should they learn war anymore man okay so that's the point there's not going to be any judgment or not Salaki. There's not going to be any war in the kingdom. Esau ain't going to just miraculously pull an AK-47 from out of his garment or an atom bomb or a nuclear bomb and decide to blow up the, the headquarters. He, that's not going to happen because he's not going to have that power. That's what says, O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Therefore, thou hast forsaken thy people in the house of Jacob because ye have replenished from the east. And our Sioux savers like the Philistines, and they please themselves and the children of strangers. And their land also full of silver and gold. Neither is there any end of their treasure, and their land is also full of the horses. Neither is there any end of their, chariot, of their chariots. And their land also is full of idols. And they worship the work of their own hands that which their own fingers have made. And this is the reason why we're in this uh, situation now. This is the reason why we're in captivity. The reason why we're being subjugated by the other nations. Why? Because we didn't keep the commandments, man. But reading up a couple of verses proves that we're not going to be in slavery anymore once the Lord comes and establishes his reign on the earth, man. Okay? This is the book of Michael 4, and it's the same thing. It says, Michael 4 and 2, it says, And many nations shall say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, 
into the house of the God of Jacob and he would teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths. It says, for the law should go forth out of Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Okay, that's end game. That's the kingdom of heaven when all things will be in its perfection. Okay, they're not going to build up the kingdom and, and, and have the gold streets and the, the particular 12 gates of the 12 disciples or the 12 apostles and the men of the Lord back in their perfection and we're marrying and we're doing what we're supposed to do. Then all of a sudden, here come this devil marching on the holy city Jerusalem and he's going to totally take over or attempt to take over. And the Most High is just going to send a fireball out of heaven to destroy him. That don't make any sense, man. And even if that was the case, Esau wouldn't have that type of power to even come nowhere near the gates of the city. So that don't even make sense, man. And it says, but they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree. Matter of fact, it says, and he should judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they should beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. And nations should not lift up sword against nation. Neither should they learn war anymore. So the, the weapons are going to be done away with. But they should sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree. And none should make them afraid. For the mouth of the Lord of the host have spoken it, man. Okay, and that's the point. It says none should make them afraid. So there's not going to be any war declared on the Israelites or in the kingdom, period. Because that's going to be a thing that's a past. That's why the scriptures say, behold, uh, 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 the first heaven and earth passed away. And uh, matter of fact, let me get it. I'm not going to butcher it. My brain ain't really working efficiently this morning. So Salakia. But it says here, for all people will walk everyone in the name of his God. And we will walk in the name of the Lord, Yahweh. It says we will walk in the name of the Lord, our power forever and ever, man. Okay. And that's the point. We're not going to have any affliction in the kingdom when it comes to the Israelites. All right. Uh, what's the scripture I just quoted? Oh, new heavens and new earth. Yep. Isaiah 65. Uh, yeah. Isaiah 65 uh, uh, and 17 is good. It says, for behold, I create new heavens and new earth. That's going into rulerships. It says, and the former should not be remembered, nor come into mind. Okay, so if the former will not be remembered, or the former of this present evil, wicked world will not be a thing in the future, then that means that there's not going to be any war. Okay, because it says here that he who bless himself in the earth should bless himself in the power of truth. And he that swear in the earth shall swear by the power of truth because the former troubles are forgotten. And what's a main trouble that we're dealing with on the earth is war, man. Okay, endless wars. Okay, rumors of wars, proxy wars, world wars, race wars, class wars, man, uh, 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 political wars. You got, uh, uh, they declare, uh, 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 what do you call it? chemical warfare, man? You know, and it says, because the former troubles are forgotten because they are hid from my eyes. And it says, for behold, I create new heavens and a new earth and the former should not be remembered nor come into mind. Meaning that this present wicked world is not going to have any dealings with the new world. And it says, but be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem are rejoicing and hear a people of joy. Okay. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping should be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. There should be no more thence the infant of days, nor old men that have not filled his days. And the child should die a hundred years old and the sinner being a hundred should be a curse, man. And they should build houses and inhabit them and they should plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them, man. Okay. It says they should not build in another habit. They should not plant in another eat. And as for the days of trees are the days of my people and my elect shall long enjoy the works of their hands and they shall labor not in vain nor bring forth trouble. Okay. Which we're in trouble now. For they are the seed of the blessed and of the Lord and their offspring with them, which proves that we're going to have children, which also proves that. The two thirds are going to come back in the kingdom because who is going to be the righteous offspring of the elect? The two thirds. OK, the Israelites are going to be reborn back into the kingdom, man, through the loins of the elect after the order of the new covenant, man. So when they come into the dirt, when they come into the new world through the loins of the elect, they're going to be brought up right and they're going to know the commandments, man. And they're going to keep the commandments. All right. And they're not going to have any uh, 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 dealings as what they did on his side. All right. So that just to put a little understanding to that particular scripture, man. But um, let's go from here to the book of uh, Ezekiel. I believe it's Ezekiel 39. Okay, because for the simple fact, man, hey, uh, this guy, Nate, man, he's teaching false doctrine. 
You know, he's teaching false doctrine and the spirit of the Lord is not dealing with him. Okay, but this is the book of Ezekiel 39 and I'm going to start at verse 6. It says, And I will send fire on Magog and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles and they should know that I am the Lord. This is going into the, the war of Armageddon, man. Okay, it says, So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel and I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore. So how would that be any wars? Okay, it says, And the heathen should know that I am Yahweh, the Holy One in Israel. Okay, this is at this time now. But he says, Behold, it is come, it is done, says the Lord Yahweh. This the day thereof, whereof which I have spoken. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth and shall set on fire and burn the weapons and both the shields and bucklers and bows and the arrows and the hand staves and the spears, and they shall burn them with fire seven years, man. So that they should take no wood out of the field, neither cut down any of the forests. But they should burn the weapons with fire, and they should spoil those that spoil them, and rob those that rob them, thus says the Lord, man. Okay? So there's not going to be any more war in the kingdom of heaven. Because if that was the case, we wouldn't have to burn all the weapons, man. And we were taught that we we're going to use spiritual power to do away with those weapons, man. Okay? So all the nuclear bombs, the, 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 all that, we're going to go around, we're going to destroy those things. And we're going to clean this world up, man. And you heathens, you, we're going to use you to do it. Okay, because we're not going to be sitting up here physically cleaning up the earth. Okay, we're going to be pushing and promoting the law, statutes, and commandments from, from our nation, man. Okay, and dealing in righteously and building up in a righteous government and, and setting up dictatorships and righteous dictatorships and laws. And, you know, uh, all brothers are going to have their prospective offices, man. They're going to have their lots, man. Brothers are going to build and be creative. We're going to literally live a life of innovation, man. Okay, we ain't gonna be dealing with this madness that we're dealing here. Jake working a fucking nine to five. And the reason why Nate is teaching that bullshit is because he wants to stay here. Okay, a nigga like him that's got his consolation on his side, he don't um, he don't want to leave this place, man. All right, because he's he's a god here, man. Okay, gathered war Psalms. This is in the book of Psalms, and this is my last precept, man. So lock him all over the place, but you know, hey, I just wanted to get this out. But this is the book of Psalms 140, and I'm going to start at verses uh, 1. It says, Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man, and preserve me from the violent man, which imagine mischiefs in their heart. Continually they are gathered together for war. Okay, it says continually, but we just read that, hey, we're not going to have any war. We're not going to have any battles anymore in the kingdom of heaven, at least not world wars. Now, we're going to put hell on you nations, man. But other than that, we ain't going to be, nobody's going to be waging war against us because that will be stupid. Why would you wage war with a with a nation of gods, man? I just you're asking for your destruction. You asking to be obliterated without remedy, man. <laughs> okay. But anyway, I'm gonna end it here, giving all praises and glory and honor that's due to you. How about Shimi? How about Shai? By Shimakakwadash. And with that, Shalom.